who can do my own hair in my own salon in my house. There we go. We are live. Okay, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Della's Voice. What a wonderful time to be here and talking about what we're going to talk about. Intuition, your inner guidance, your sixth sense, um, your um, whatchamacallit. My husband says, I just know, you know. So uh, we're going to talk about that with my friend Pauline McGuire. She's a master neuro-linguistic uh, trained with and with the likes of Joe Dispenza. I am so I'm, honored. I am a Joe Dispenza <laughs> genius as well. <laughs> I, I'm just um, so, so happy, so grateful to know you, Polly. You're one of the, um, I want to say, uh, the, the, one of the most spiritually charged people I know in my life. Wow. And, uh, but, but it's so true. And Thank you. so you always talk about intuition. And I think this is a good time to talk about that. And uh, I want to thank you for being here once again. I'm so. Oh, glad my pleasure! It's always it's it's always an adventure, and uh, to see where we end up with a with a topic, and uh, right, just put my two cents in. I can only speak about my journey. Um, but it's do wonderful. Do you talk about intuition a lot? Yeah. Um, I think I think you do. I do. You're right. Yeah. Because every every um. When did I? I consciously made the decision probably at maybe September of last year that I would only act in my highest good. Mm. And that's, so good. That's, that's a huge reorientation of life. Um, so yeah, I, I have what I call an internal guidance system and it is really fine tuned. Um, so, Pauline. Yeah. First of all, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, and to everybody. <laughs> you know what? Because there, there are people who are mothers, and then there are people who mother. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. the noun and the verb. Yeah. So, regardless of whether you went through the act or not, um, yeah, I think you know, pretty everybody gets honored today. Happy Mother's Day. So um, you said you said uh, inner guidance system. And my first yes. question is this. Does everyone have it? Yes. Okay. Yes. And why I think that this is a really appropriate topic right now is because we, so the last time you and I, that I was on Della's voice was March mm -hmm. the 15th. That was really when all this was hitting. Yes. And I think I was the first one that we did via Zoom at that uh, point. I think so. Yeah. I think that was the first right. social because we, we were meant to. Interview. It was like, oh, okay, well, this is how things are going out. Let's be safe. And here we are two months later in what I like to call a global timeout. Right? We we've all been kind of like, okay, this this is what's happening. So we live or we lived in a very busy and loud world. Um, intuition speaks very quietly. So a lot of people were living, you know, these very loud, busy lives. And, you know, and then you've got your unconscious mind that's saying as well, that's chirping in there and it's loud, right? And, and it's like, don't do this. And no, you can't do that. And so you got to get really quiet um, in order to, to hear. Uh, hang on one second here. I just got to. Uh, and I want to make sure that we're actually broadcasting live on, on Facebook. There we are. Yes, we are. And I want to invite everybody who's watching right now to um, comment, like to, you know, tell us what you think about um, intuition. Do you have it? Uh, when have you felt it most? Let's make this as interactive as possible. And I think it shows up for people in a lot of different ways. It could be 
Um, it could be the, sorry, I, I, one second. So my, my mom always, um, talks about this and whether it's this telepathic, um, energy that she has with me, um, or maybe this is, is, is this part of intuition? Cause Sometimes I'll be thinking about her and she'll be thinking about me at the exact same time, or I'll pick up the phone to call her. And so she'll say, Oh my God, I was just going to call you. So in my, in my world, in my NLP world, when something happens once, we just call it a coincidence. Okay. Something happened and you noticed it. When something happens twice, it's a pattern now. And that's the time where if somebody, let's say a friend of mine pops into my head twice in a day, the minute they pop in the second time I call them, what's going on? I don't know why. I don't know why that connection needs to happen, but they could have been saying, I was just thinking about you or, oh my God, I was going to call you because I needed to ask you a question. So absolutely that, that to me is a big part of the internal guidance system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh goosebumps goosebumps are a big mm -hmm. one for me gut when your your guts your guts telling you something um whether or not you know what it is um but i think one of the things i wanted to say when we're talking about intuition is life is always happening for you you showed up here with a purpose your soul has a purpose for this lifetime and you're being guided there. Um, so if, you know, if you're, if something catches your attention, let's say you're scrolling on Facebook or some on the, on the internet or something, and something catches your eye over all the other things that didn't have a look at that. It, it, it showed up somewhere. It triggered somewhere. Because that's your intuition. That is your intuition. You, you noticed it. Your brain filtered that information in. We go from like 2 million bits of information per minute, per second, sorry, to we, we delete, distort, and generalize that down to 132. Whatever came into your awareness made it to the 132 from the 2 million. It's meant to be there. You're not kidding when you say there's so much going on. There's so much noise. There is. Part of the, right? And so intuition is very quiet. So you literally, you have to pay attention. You do. You have to, you have to get yourself quiet. And there's a lot of people I'm sure right now who are at home that aren't used to being at home who are not in their regular routine and things are much quieter that are probably like, oh, what's that? They may never have paid attention, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people, uh, probably people who are watching this that have been like, yeah, but I didn't know what that was. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's your intuition saying, yes, no, stop, go faster, try over here. Mm -hmm. You, we are all guided. Um, I know for me, if somebody says to me, you know, I, you know, or they, like a friend will be like, I read this book and I really think you'd enjoy it. I ordered the book that day. Right. They're, they're, we're, I bring you messages and you bring me messages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't all come from ourselves. Um, but it, it all, it all happens around us. I was in, um, I think it was Costco, maybe it was August or September. And I walked into Costco and I looked beside me and there was a guy I used to date. And I was like, meh, I don't really feel like saying anything to him. There's really nothing to say. <laughs> so I kept walking. I didn't think much of it. 
So then I go, I'm up at Costco and New Market. So then I think I went to Superstore. I went to a couple of other stores. Eventually I, I had an appointment I was getting to. So I kind of made my way south. So then I went into Winners. And then I walked from Winners into DSW. So I'm walking into DSW. I look and there's somebody right beside me. And I look and it's him again. And I'm like, okay, had we both walked to the superstore, I probably wouldn't have paid too much attention to it. But now I've done a, a few zigs and zags and here we are walking into DSW. So, you know, we go in, he goes left, I go right. Anyway, I leave and now it, it's twice. Now it's a pattern. And so I'm like, what, what, what am I supposed to figure out here? Like, what, what, why did that show up for me? And the, the answer I got was that message wasn't for you. That was a message for him. I'm like, oh, okay. did he see you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah. He saw me both times. I saw him both times and we just kind of went and, um, like everything that shows up in, up in your life means something. So how did you figure that one out, Pauline? How, so, how so of course now he shows up out. once, right? I see him in Costco. Then now again, I'm in DSW. I'm like, okay, this is twice. Now I'm paying attention. So I was in my car, I was driving to my appointment and I was like, okay, what's, what does this have to do with me? Mm -hmm. It showed up in my life. And what does it have to do with me? So I literally asked myself that question. And my intuition, like I, we have a good relationship. And the message I got back was the message was for him, not for you. So I, in that case, delivered a message. That's so interesting. Um, you always say that. I, I know last time too, you mentioned that um, the asking that question, what does it have to do with me? Yes. That's, that's a, very that's important. so important. Yes. And I've asked my, myself that question so many times ever since our last talk. Yeah. And I discover so many different things. And a lot of times it's like, mm, nothing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. So move on, girlfriend. <laughs> oh, so it's got something. So so did who did so it had to do with the person you were with no it's um i, I think um i think the subject of our last conversation when we we were talking about ask yourself that question what does it have to do with you was that why do we let things affect us so much you know why do we mm. um or or maybe you're feeling a certain way uh, if something about, triggers you yes when something triggers you is when something pushes your buttons and um, the question you ask yourself is, uh, what does it have to do with me? What am I feeling? What does it have to do with me? And I've asked myself that question um, a lot of times because I have a lot of buttons. And so, and most of the time, Pauline, it, the answer came back, nothing. This has nothing to do with you. So, um, you know, the, just look inside and see what's happening in there. Because oh yeah if it's if it's triggering something yeah, yeah. there's something in so there's mm -hmm. something in you that's resonating with it uh there's something that's showing up to be healed and sometimes it's to say even just to notice it to say isn't that interesting because that would have triggered me before and now it's not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know it's i think getting in touch with and understanding our internal guidance system is part of what I call writing our owner's manual, right? Like we, we don't come with an owner's manual. <laughs> be great too bad. I know that would be awesome if we did. <laughs> right. And, and we, we need, we figure ourselves out. We figure out, okay, what foods do we like? What, what don't we like? What, what doesn't agree with us? What this, what that? And I think the, the internal guidance system is, is just a part of that. You know, if I, if I, if I get goosebumps, what does that mean? If, if, if I get a gut clench, what does that mean? Um, yeah, all that, all that stuff, but we all have an internal guidance system. And I think in the last eight weeks, as the world has quieted down, I'm hoping a lot more people are tuning in. 
and and it doesn't need it doesn't mean that your life needs to be quiet you you can connect to that um which always acts in your highest good even if you don't understand why why things are happening um you can connect through meditation um i connect sometimes with yoga um what else did i want to say? um just being in stillness you know maybe going for a walk just getting to a point where you can hear your thoughts and if you have a practice for that or if you don't but that's when the intuition shows up because between the world being really loud your unconscious mind and your conscious mind you know talking to you 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 have to go in and get really quiet to to make that connection and once you've made the connection and you start to to feel the different energies then um then your intuition will guide you even in a busy world and i think part of that too has to do like you said about knowing yourself getting to know yourself um noticing i mean how many times has something happened and uh, i've said to myself ah oh, i i i knew i shouldn't have said that or i knew i shouldn't have done that or i knew uh, I, I, I knew I should have, right? So we, we notice these little things maybe after the fact, but as time goes by and we pay attention, uh, I think we, we get good at picking up those, um, those signs. If, yeah, if we pay attention, mm -hmm. like let's say you, you, know, you, you should have said something and you didn't. Mm -hmm. First time it happens, you may not notice it. Second time it's like, oh man, that's happened twice now. Yes. Third time, so first is a coincidence, the second is a pattern. The third time could be a problem. You know, you're not in that attention. Case, maybe <laughs> you're not, maybe you're not standing up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not standing in emotional honesty. Maybe you're not standing in, in uh, emotional integrity. Um, and it's really getting honest with ourselves and saying, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And what I see people, the, the challenge that they need to get, that many people need to get over is in order to have those conversations with themselves is the judgment. I shouldn't have done that. Or I shouldn't have, instead of go into observer mode, that's interesting. Why the heck did I do that? Mm, that's what cool. old program is running here. Cause that mm -hmm. Here's who I want to be and here's who I tell myself I am and this is behavior that showed up and they don't jive. So mm. what's going on? Yes. Um, so, so you're saying we get into trouble when we say things like, I should have known better. Well, if, if, if you've said that to yourself, you did know better. Mm -hmm. Why did you not listen to yourself? Mm. That's so you knew good. better. You knew better in that moment. Yes. But so it's, it's not about knowing better. It's I knew better. What was going on in my head that I chose not to say something. Right. Right. So let me learn from this experience. And the next time I have that gut feeling. Three I... times, one, two, three <laughs> coincidence. As soon as it shows up twice. Yes. Pay attention. Okay. Because the third time it could be a problem. Mm. It could be, oh man, I've done that again. And then we go into shame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we weren't paying, we were given the signs, mm -hmm. but we weren't, uh, we didn't pay attention to them. So now, you know what it's like when somebody gives you an apology, you know, I said, I'm so sorry I did that again. And you know, they're going to do it again. Right. And then the apology doesn't matter because they're going to do it again. Um, it's to, it's to word off that, that, that three times is a problem. Get honest with yourself. Why did you do it? Mm. You know, um, we're all human. We're all having a human journey and experience. None of us is perfect. And the other side of that is one time is a coincidence. Two times is a pattern. Three times could be a massive opportunity that you're not paying attention to. If something is showing up, 
it's showing up for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so it might not be a problem. It might be opportunity is trying to come to you and you're not paying attention. Why does that keep happening to me? I don't know, but it keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. So tw at two times, pay attention, stop in your tracks and be okay. I've seen that twice now. What, what does this have to do with me? Why, why did I attract that? So <laughs> the first time, um, when you get that gut feeling, mm -hmm. I mean, it could be, it could be intuition or it could be the chili dog, but the second time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> it's not the chili dog. <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's just trying to, it's going in with an observer mode curiosity to say, I wonder what this means. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and without judgment, without, it could be the next, like the, the universe is trying to give you exactly what you want. If you're blah, 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 oblivious, you know, it's, you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. You don't have um, the reticular activation. You, you, you're not, you haven't trained yourself to pay attention to it. You don't even know what it looks like when it shows up. So um, some people might watch this and they don't know what you mean by reticular activation. So, so reticular activation system. So the best way to describe it is if I said to you, Della, I just bought a brand new car and it's this model and it's white. Um, sorry, no, let, let's do a different example. You're going looking for a car. You need a new car. And you, you're like, Oh, okay. I just looked at that model of car in a white because I really like it. So now you see that car all the time now because now you're aware it exists. It appeals to you. So your reticular activation system for that car has been turned on. Mm -hmm. You've been driving by that car for weeks and months, perhaps years and never noticed it. But now, because you're like, okay, now I'm, I'm willfully going and looking at this car. I need a car, excuse me. I need a car. So you've turned, you've turned on your awareness of this car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by yes. that's your reticular activation system. So, so sure that's really good. That's really interesting. Right? And so it might, and what if it's a, if it's a problem, we don't want it showing up three times. We want a one. Okay. Two. Okay. Now I'm paying attention. What does this mean? We've all played situations and scenarios out and we swore we never would again, but we didn't get to the root of why, why is this showing up for me? Do I have a limiting belief here? Do I feel I deserve this? Do I feel I don't deserve something? These are the breadcrumbs that life life gives us to make to, to make things interesting. Mm -hmm. How has intuition, your inner guidance system, trusting it and and paying attention to it, helped you in your um, journey? Um, so a lot, a lot. Um, So I think like, like most people, I lived the life that I was brought up to live. And um, there are situations that I was put in that there, there was no roadmap for. And that's when my intuition kicked in where I was like, I don't know what to do here. And that's, and that's when I probably started to pay attention because intuition said, we got you covered sister. Like when you, when you don't know what to do, you, 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 you turn on your reticular activation system. Then you're looking for answers and they show up. So, uh, yeah, I live my life by my internal guidance system. 
everything on what meditation should I do that day? Should I do this or should I do that? What does my gut say? Ah, we're going to go here. And um, so in terms of trusting it, um, that could be a little trickier. Because <laughs> sometimes we're actually unprogramming. We're unprogramming what we've lived our whole life thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you give so, me an example of that? give you an example of that. So I just went through um, earlier in the week, a situation where dread showed up. And I realized this is not the first time dread has shown up for me. And so same, what does this have to do with me? Why is this showing up? Now I've noticed it. And um, what it ended up being was that in that particular circumstance, the dread showed up as a message for me to say, you're not connected with your, with, you've lost your connection in this certain circumstance, which you had a traumatic experience with in the past, you're not connected with your internal guidance system. So dread showed up and Prior to noticing it, I was putting the dread on the situation, but the dread had nothing to do with the situation. The dread showed up to say, we're disconnected, we're offline, come back online. Did that help? I love how you have uh, an emotion, an exact emotion for, for how you feel. And that's really um, that's really interesting to me and not so easy to do for myself. So when you say dread showed up, I'm trying to put um, a meaning to that word dread to see what it looks like. Is it worrying about something? So it... to, to me, mm. dread is when a situation shows up and you start to play a disaster reel. Oh, this isn't going to be good. Oh, oh no, this is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. That to me is dread. You're dreading what's going to happen mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel good. It's completely disempowering. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how that one showed up for me this week. For naming Naming our emotions is really important, especially if you're in a relationship, right? Which I'm looking, but <laughs> then, we had a, then we had a global pandemic. A I'm telling you, she's a catch. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me start dating. I think I had just gone on to match actually when it's like, boom, we're in quarantine. Okay. <laughs> you trying to, why did this show up for me? What does this have to do with me? Mm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to say like, how, how do we get our needs met if we can't name our own emotions? I mean, it's so simple, but I mean, I have really simple words for my emotions. I, I you, you know, I, I don't have different um, words for every single emotion. So now I, when, when you explain dreading, I, I totally feel that because I do that a lot. So your, your, your reticular activation system for naming your emotions has probably just been turned on. Ah, thank so, you. Right? So now it's just going to be, oh, what am I feeling? Yes. What's, what sensation am I feeling? What am I, what am I naming it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in your body's nervous system, fear and excitement are the exact same thing. It's just what you call it. So your body's experiencing the same thing either way, but by, by how you're looking at it, you're, you can make it a really great, oh my God, this is awesome. Or you can be mm -hmm. in absolute fear, but it's the mm -hmm. same chemical response in your body. Yes. So, okay. So let, let's go through that. Actually, this is really cool. Okay. So 
what happens to my body? Let's let's go over that. Uh, when I'm fearful or when I'm really, what you say, excited? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the same chemical response. I can't take yeah. you through the 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 exact chemicals. Um, but let's see how. Like, let's see physically. Uh, when I'm scared, I um, my heart my heart races. I'm sweating. Yep. Um, 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 yeah, what, like I feel hot. Yep. And when you're excited, you get that, like that for me, it's the gut flutter. It's the, um, so let, let's talk about fear and excitement in terms of the unconscious mind, right? Okay. So the unconscious mind has 19 prime directives. And a really big one that really dictates most of most people's lives is that it wants to keep you safe and okay. it's, it's determination of safe is wh where you've already been, what you've already done. We survived that so we can survive it again. So my job is to keep you safe. So I'm going to keep you where you've already been. I'll give you, I, I'll give you an extreme example. Um, women who are in abusive relationships, why don't they leave? Because the unconscious mind is saying you survived this. This is, this is a safe place again. for you to be. Oh, wow. Right. This is the unconscious mind programming. Mm -hmm. So, um, so now if your unconscious mind is trying to keep you in the familiar, does it want you getting excited about something new? No, because we don't know what it is. <laughs> to, it, to the unconscious mind, it's, it's new, it's danger. So mm -hmm. that's the whole fear excitement thing, right? Mm -hmm. It could be really exciting, but your unconscious mind is saying, oh, no, no, it's new. It's, we're going to fear that because mm -hmm. I want you here in the familiar where it's safe. Mm -hmm. And that, that in itself is one of the heart, one of the reasons that um, people have such a hard time making changes, you know, so January, everyone goes to the gym for about a week and a half, two weeks, and then they fall off because they're doing the physical stuff, but it's the unconscious mind work is still saying, yeah, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So let's get you back, not going to the gym. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, losing weight, making any changes. It wants you in the familiar. So part of making the change is doing the mental work to change the program. Oh my God. Like th this, I, I just thought about this. This is the same way it works for when um, people have an addiction. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a program. It's a program. So their mind is saying, no, you don't want to go there because that's unfamiliar. We're comfortable right here. Yes, right. So deal with the, what, what all the underlying stuff. It's, you know, I call it white knuckling it. I'm just going to, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to have that cigarette. I'm not going to. That'll only, that'll only work for so long until you change what your unconscious mind is saying. Mm -hmm. Polly, is that why hypnosis works for some people? Mm. Because, yes, yeah? hypnosis gets through the critical faculty into the, into the program, like the, the, the programming system of the brain. It's, it's one method. Um, yeah, what, what doesn't usually work for people is willpower, right? Just willpower. It doesn't work. Oh, my gosh, yes. But, yes. You, can, but you make, you know, like you, you, you make some changes on the operating system, and, and now you're cooking with gas. And as human beings, um, we have to project things out like that's what our relationships are we're projecting our image of the world out so that we can see it 
Um, so your reality really dictates what's going on in here. Mm -hmm. And that's why people see the world situation, what's going on totally different. Oh, absolutely. Because everybody's the world that and the reality everybody lives in it, is the one they've made. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's people and you're, you're seeing it like you're seeing now you're seeing it on huge, huge levels, given, given what's happening in the world. Um, let me give you an example. Like you could have two, two different people. And one person is like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. I have this, I have that. And um, they, they live in abundance. They can see the abundance around them. And you know, they may not have a ton of money in the bank or they may have no money in the bank, but they're still happy. And they, they know that they're, they're abundant. They're loved. There's so much abundance around them. And on the other side, you've got somebody who may live in a, like a mansion with bags of money in the bank. They're living in a poverty mindset. They don't, they can't see abundance. They're worried about losing everything they have. Those are two very different models of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think with what's going on right now with people losing income and so much uncertainty is those fear-based models of the world are very loud. They're very loud. So going back to intuition, I want to get this clear. Does everyone's intuition um, guide them towards what's best for them? Yes. Because that's, that's really important to know. It is hugely important to know. So um, that's why I, I talk, I speak in terms of highest good, right? So uh, when I first started to do a lot of my work, I lost a lot of friends because suddenly I changed the relationship because I was doing different things and we didn't have anything in common before or anymore. And that didn't feel good. Was it in my highest good? Yes, absolutely. Because I was on the path that's in my highest good. And those relationships needed to end so that new people who, who could support me in that path could show up. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we get confused in that highest good doesn't always feel good. And we really only, and I just had this conversation with a friend this week and I was like, well, this is going on and that's going on. And I don't know what's happening, um, but I'll know at the end, right? It's hindsight. You're like, why is this happening? Why is that happening? And then it all plays out in your highest good. And you're like, that's why that's why it happened and that was mm -hmm. awesome I couldn't even have made that up myself mm -hmm. even if I had planned that whole thing out I couldn't have planned it that well mm -hmm. yes so I think yes we are being guided in our highest good um and it, it's trusting that and it's getting honest with ourselves so let's play out a little scenario here Let's say you're, you're, there's somebody and they're not, they're not in a relationship that's working for them, but they're not being honest with themselves about it. And then the relationship breaks down. Is it in their highest good? Yeah. It wasn't working for them anyway. Did they feel good? No. Mm -mm. But their highest good is now that now they can resolve that, hopefully get the learnings and then move into something that actually meets their needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Lots yes. of what does this have to do with me in situations like that? So yeah, it doesn't always feel good, but it is in your highest good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it happens so much, it happens so much. It's like something tells me I should do this. Something, something tells me I should turn here. Yep. Something tells me I should um, talk to this person. Right. Something tells me I should watch this video right now. Yeah. Those are all signs that you're being given. Yes. You, you came in, your soul came in with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Things it wanted to do, things it wanted to accomplish, things it wanted to experience. And these are all the road signs to say, yeah, go here instead of there. Because this, you know, it's your higher self yes. that's guiding it. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I'll be, you'd say I'll be driving somewhere and then I'll realize, oh, I normally don't turn on that street. I normally turn on that street. Go with it. Go with Re it. Yeah. I don't know. You if never know. Just... You, you might have been guided away from a car yeah. accident. Yeah. You might yeah. now see somebody on the street that you know, or you it might trigger a memory that, that you needed to remember at that point in time. Um yeah, I love when that stuff happens. I was like, okay, cool. What am I, you know, what's gonna happen now? I know it's ex exciting, right? So this is, this is what I wanted to say is never have I ever regretted doing something that my gut said I should do. Like when, what I'm saying is this. So when I have that feeling that, um, you know, I don't know, turn here. Yeah. I've never afterwards said, oh, I wish I hadn't turned here. It's only when my gut says, don't do it. And I do it that I regret it. Do you oh, know what I mean? Yeah, because you, you it, it said in your highest good, don't do this. Yes. And I did it. You and did I, it. So that's not going to feel good. Yes. So no. But so what I'm saying is listening to my intuition um, always results in something good and it's like what you said your highest good yeah because your your gut knows when you when it's when your highest good is happening and you're in it it knows it the test for me is let's say I'm going to make a decision on something if my belly totally relaxes it's the right decision Mm, that's your test. Yeah. Not that I want my belly to totally relax. <laughs> <laughs> Let gravity win. <laughs> Not a girl's best friend. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's a test for me. If there's, if my gut just release, relaxes. All right. There, there's my answer. Mm. Every, every, time we go looking outside of ourselves for an answer for a direction for anything we're looking in the wrong direction it's about getting quiet um listening and asking questions right like when I first started, you know, I'd get an answer and it might trigger me. It's like, what do you mean you want me to do that? And, and then, so kind of, instead of stopping there being like, okay, why, what does this have to do with me? And, and just going a little quieter and a little deeper. And um, because we have in society been conditioned that certain things that we may want, we've been led to believe we'll never have them. Mm -hmm. You could never do that. That's crazy. But your soul is saying, I really, really want to do this. 
And then we, I'm sure I know I have people and they took crazy leaps of faith, got out of corporate worlds, started their own businesses, and they are so happy that they're glowing because mm -hmm. they listened to the guidance. Mm -hmm. um, Pauline, if someone wants to tune into their intuition, if they, if they want to find an easier way to make their inner guidance show up better for them. What are some things they can do? So it's like any relationship um, in that. So let's say you, you, you have not paid attention before and you know, you hear you hear us talking tonight and you're kind of like yeah i might have had some gut stuff going on but i never paid attention to it i i thought it was the burrito i had at lunch um so now you're going to start to build a relationship with your intuition so first thing is get quiet could be at home it's not going to happen in the family room with the TV on and the kids around. That's not where it, that's where it's not going to happen. But getting quiet, going for a walk, meditating and starting to listen to the whisper. And, you know, let's start small. Do I cook chicken or beef for dinner? Wait for the answer. <laughs> that's easy, right? Do I need an apple or an orange? Wait yeah. for the answer. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you'll be like, then you're tuning into that energy. You're tuning into that frequency, like a radio dial. And it's like, oh, there it is. Now you know how to get back to it. So small stuff, first of all. And listen, and no, like when, let's say you ask a question, where does the answer show up? Does it show up as a thought? Does it show up as a picture in your mind? Does it show up as, you know, do I go left or right? And when you ask if you go left, you got nothing. When you ask if you go right, you get a gut clench. Okay, then, then those, are, those are your tells. But this is you writing your owner's manual. How does it show up for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so cool very interesting play with it yeah and you know in, in this this time i this is such an appropriate topic um the world as we know it has changed and it will continue to change and a lot of what we relied on before has changed and maybe a lot of it wasn't even working for anybody so i think there's going to be two really key factors for people and one is getting very very clear on your values what's important to you what do you stand for does your behavior align with that and the second is listening to your gut um because there's no playbook for where we're going now mm -hmm. right I think of um, a lot of the parents in the US right now who have maybe have the option of sending their children back to school. Yeah. Hard to Just decision. because you have the option of doing it, does it make it the right decision for you and your family? Mm -hmm. Right? So now you're dealing with values and your gut. And, and those, I think, having to rely on those honing those really clearly and strongly are what we're going to really to rely and depend on. I had the conversation with my son and I said, you know, like if this is us, cause I, I think Quebec's opening schools too, maybe I'm, I'm, don't quote me on that. And I said, you know, like if you were in grade school or high school and your school opened, you would not be going mm -hmm. because my priorities are that you are healthy 
not that I, I get to go back to work or whatever the, you know, and that my gut, my gut is telling me no. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be a lot of people looking for this type of direction. And a lot of people are used to going outside of themselves. Um, you know, they might be getting frustrated with the government of, well, they didn't tell us to do this and they didn't tell us to do that. How would they know? This has never happened before. Everybody's doing the best that they can. So now it's about coming inside of ourselves and saying, what do we stand for? We all have an internal guidance system and what's right for me may not be right for you. Absolutely. So if you're, if you don't, if, if I have an internal guidance system and you haven't connected to yours and you're following my lead, it'll work for me. It's my guidance system. Chances are, it's not going to work for you. Oh, so good. You're, this is so good. So clear because you're right. A lot of times when we're faced with a, a decision um some of us go outside of ourselves and ask people around us well, what should i do what should i do what should i do where as the best answer is right inside so in addition so you know that in addition to to um my neurolinguistic programming practice i'm a financial planner mm -hmm. and what we're finding now or what what everybody's finances their snow globes have been shaken um nobody knows what's going to happen and no and i don't say that in a bad scary way i just say that it's a it's a blank slate and um the, what was the example i was going to give you What I'm hoping to see is that people just throw away the old that wasn't working for them. I'm going to give you an example. Um, they were in a routine. This is what we do. This is what, you know, we spend too much. We go on vacations together. We work too hard. We don't spend time with our kids. And um, because that's how it was set up. Well, now that you've been home together for two months and do you want to go back to that life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do you maybe want to do things differently and, and realize, wow, you know what? I don't want to be away from my kids that much. I did it. Be I sacrificed before to give to them, but now I'm seeing that. I was sacrificing the most important thing, which was my time with them to give them material things to make up for not being there. These are the types of values based decisions that we're going to be making mm -hmm. that I want people to make. And in some cases, because of the economic toll that has been taken, we're going to, there's your people are going to be having to make a choice. And they may not like either option. My, in my practice, it's about saying, okay, what are our values and what are our priorities? Because we want you to make, I want you to make this decision and be able to live with it and move on. I mean, we're in a, we're in a boat right now where, you know, people are having to, you know, decide whether they can pay their rent or feed their children. Neither of those feels good. Nobody wants to not pay their bills, but what's the priority? So it's about getting peace of mind and, and saying, I know this, I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can. And when I, when I act in alignment with my values and with what my gut tells me, I get to move on instead of being plagued with, did I make the right decision? Um, which we know a lot of a lot of people live there. Yes, yes. Did so I did I, I did I make yes, that clear? Yes, yes, you did. And I I also want to say this because 
Um, I hear this more and more now when, uh, you know, when someone's faced to, with, with the decision making and they can't really make up their mind and they know they can trust their own gut and their own intuition, I hear this a lot. I'm going to meditate on this or I'm going to pray on this, right? And so this gives them a chance to really sit still and really listen to that inner guidance which ultimately will be to for their higher good. Absolutely. I I do it all the time. Like I you know I get answers pretty quickly. Um it's even about who you do business with. Right? If you're mm-hmm. shifting, that's going to shift too. You know, if if you're saying okay, I'm going to a values-based intuition led uh that that's my platform then and who you've been dealing with or you know the person at the bank or is saying like are you nuts they're not your person anymore they don't get it they're still in the old you do what i tell you to do and this is what we do no 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 this isn't what we do anymore i'll give you an example so um One of my values is to support my community, especially when this whole thing hit. Now, before that, I'm Scottish. I am value. Like I'm Miss Flip Shopper price matching. And then instantly, as soon as all this hit, I was like, no, 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 no. Like this is, this is different. This is new. And it's how, how are those choices and decisions going to reflect now? So it was things like where I'm shopping, what I'm buying, like I'm not buying Heinz ketchup, I'm buying French's, I'm supporting Canadian product, you know, um, when, you know, when, when things first hit and, you know, everything was sold out, it's like, okay, I need stuff. And I, one of the there's a caterer here in Newmarket that did it I've done I've used before he's great and he did an online store yeah it's more expensive boom here's my order so those types of things and I think we're all so that's me going from price matching flyer shopper to oh no I'm supporting local and this guy's getting my business and I think we're all faced with that Mm-hmm. that what what do we stand for are we going to go to walmart or are we going to go to our local home hardware mm-hmm. are we going to go back to starbucks or are we going to go to the local coffee shop on main street mm-hmm. we've all we've all had our snow globes shaken mm-hmm. and i think that the you know people who maybe started to pay attention or they were already already on that path are now saying, yeah, I'm going to be doing a few things differently mm-hmm. because we don't want to recreate where we just came from. Where I think through this whole thing, we're seeing a lot of what wasn't working, the inequities, and it's how do we get better going forward? And we have these perfect, amazing factory installed internal guidance systems that we just need to access and and figure out like you just i just gave you a new car and now go figure out where the lights are and awesome uh this this is a talk that we can continue having like i just absolutely yeah and it's um, amazing actually it's interesting because uh in my practice i'm actually launching something new it'll be it's coming in the next couple of weeks and it's about this it's about Tell me. tell me about it Uh, it's, um, I'll just, I won't tell you all about it. I'll just wait till it's, I'm ready to launch it, but it's a values-based financial planning. It's about guiding people through that. Um, which is diametrically opposite to how our, any of our finances have worked before. You know, it's the, not the keeping up with the Joneses and we always do this and we always do that. No, everything's different now. Start with what you want. What's important to you. Um, yeah, so that's, that's coming. Um, I know we have to wrap up, but I, what I want to 
talk about because I want to share it with your um, your viewers is go love 20. Okay, do it. Okay. So, um, so go love 20 is a meditation. I'm, I'm a, a Dr. Joe Dispenza student and go love 20 is a meditation that he developed and recorded. Um, I guess it was at the end of April right now. We're all distancing, but we're all still connected. And what Go Love 20 is, is it's a meditation that you do, you meditate for somebody else. You bring them into your heart um, and you send them love that way, which we all need. And it is a beautiful experience for the person um, giving, giving the Go Love. Um, it started within our, our, uh, Dr. Joe community and I was, so we, we say that you've been affected. You've now been affected with go love 20. Like I affected you earlier. I just got affected. You got affected. I, as, as you're talking, I have goosebumps, like internal I, guidance I, and stuff. I felt it. I felt it when, when I was doing the meditation and I'm, I'm feeling it now as you're talking. Okay, so now, now you got goosebumps. What is what are the goosebumps telling you? They're saying this is this is so important. This is what she's this talking is about. Is this really, is really right. important. Mm -hmm. Right. So there you go. First note, you know, in your in your owner's manual. Boom. We like goosebumps. We pick now. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Right, because yes. they'll show up more now because it's like, oh, we got her attention. Now she's she's connected that she got them and what it means. So we're gonna give her more examples of that. So go love twenty. Uh, so you, it's about a fifteen minute meditation, and it's a guided meditation. So you take somebody else. So I I did it for Della before uh, before we came on tonight, and. Um, it is a beautiful experience for the person meditating, the person giving and the person receiving and the effects are non-local. So I actually have meditated for uh, friends in Germany and the Netherlands um, and they felt it. They were in goosebumps and tears halfway around the world. So this is such a beautiful, so now you've been affected. So now you can go and do the meditation for somebody else. So how it works is I sent the message to you via messenger and in it, it said, um, can I read, can I read what it says? Yes. Said? Yes. Um, the first part was just for me, but you can read it if you want. <laughs> Well, what you, what you're doing is you, you're taking a moment and saying, what is it I love about this person? Mm -hmm. What are the qualities about this person that makes them important and meaningful, but that I want them in my life? Um, so hi, Della, I want you to know some of the things that I love about you. So that's the first line. And then it's your passion for life, your authenticity and your commitment to yourself and connecting and sharing your journey to inspire others, your kindness and friendship. So that's when I sat in my journal and I said, okay, I, I'm going to meditate for Della. What, what do I love about Della? Um, that's what came up. So then it says in a, in a moment, I'll be taking you into my heart while doing a special meditation with the intention for you to feel the love I feel for you be open to receive. So what I, what I do is I send it via messenger because then I know somebody's seen it and it's powerful. Like I don't want anyone driving and getting love bombed and being like, what's going on? Um, I did it for a friend last week and she, she got overwhelmed and she had to go for a nap after. So I always kind of give them a heads up that, Hey, this is coming. And so that they can sit and be present and enjoy it. Um, so that's, that's what it is. Um, if you like, you can go to his website. There's all kinds of real cool frames that you can put on your pictures on Facebook and 
you know, I got go loved, I've been affected and then start affecting your friends like, and your family. Um, the person who's doing the meditation, you're, you're experiencing it. Your, your, your heart is opening because you're giving and the person receiving it gets the message saying all these beautiful things about them that they may not have known that you felt. Um, it's very intentional. And, um, I think the last update I saw from him was that there was over a hundred thousand people who had been affected. And I think that's a fairly conservative number. Cause I know myself, I've probably done 40 people. That's a lot of love going around. It's a lot of love going around, but I think we all need a lot of love right now. Yes, we do. We do. And just, you know, the, <sighs> response to the, pro, the response has been beautiful. I know when I received my, you know, when I got affected, oh, your heart just. <sighs> <laughs> I know, I know I was like. <sighs> <laughs> and if I'm feeling down a little bit down in the day and I need a little pick me up, it's like, I'm going to go love bomb somebody. <laughs> I'm going to send some love bombs. Oh, uh, this, I hope this catches on like forest fire. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? So if you want to put your, put your, I'll, I'll send you the link to the frame so you can put it on your Facebook. Yeah, I'll do that. And, I'll do that. And it's interesting because I, there, um, I was getting some not great energy <laughs> from my ex side of the family. And I was getting a little frustrated with it. And I'm like, come on, nobody needs this right now. And instead of doing what I would normally do, I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm flipping the script. I love bombed them for three days in a row. Completely sh shifted the dynamic. Yeah. 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 You went, you, you went inside yourself. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's my ex-husband and it's, it's like, you know what? We have a child together at some point in time, there was something. So let me try and connect back to that and back to your humanness and my humanness and just be like, this energy is looking for healing. So let me just send you some. And yeah, it was, I did it for three days in a row just to be sure. <laughs> Um, well, some but, people need more reinforcement. Yeah, but it's just doing things differently, not in that mm -hmm. anger, fear, you did this and I, no, I'm just going to love bomb you. That's awesome. And let me tell you, when I was dealing with it the other way, I wasn't feeling the love. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't feeling good. I, was I believe it. I believe it. Let's make this. Let's make this catch. Yes. So I'm going to love. A, like 100,000 people plus in the world. And then the love time, bomb we'll, a whole bunch of people. He's Sounds done good. a mutation since. We'll do that the next time. But the first Sounds one good. is go love 20. Pick the people you love. And it is such a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift that you get to give. And you received it. You know how beautiful it is to receive it. It's, so it's yeah, awesome. let's, let's, let's go love bomb. Woo! You got it. All you got right. It. If um, you want to get in touch with Pauline, you can reach her right here under this post. Um, she's tagged. Yeah. And yes, reach out to her. She's Ooh, awesome. If you have any questions or you just want to connect, mm -hmm. um, it, it is, you don't, it's, it's one of those things of you know you got to feel your way and when you're just starting out you don't know, even know what you're looking for so just be brave be correct be courageous you can only be brave in something that you've already done be courageous and just start playing with it and you know if you want to have a discussion on facebook ask a question and, and we'll go just be open be open to be learning open. Yeah, you've yeah. got this amazing built in factory installed guidance system, top of the line. It's time to start using it.
Yes. There's no better time. Thank you so much, Pauline. My pleasure. This was an awesome talk. Um, we're going to be back soon with Pauline McGuire, uh, my friend. And who knows uh, what the topic will be. Yes, honestly. Seriously. I want to see, you know what, I'll post. Um, I will post, po I'll send you, let's get you posting your Go Love 20 picture. Um, so send that to me and I'll get right I'll on. I'll get you, I'll jump on and then, um, yeah, so what we want to see, uh, even just do Go Love 20, do it for yourself. I actually did it for my um, five-year-old me. I really had hit a rough spot maybe a week or a week and a half ago. And I just thought, how am I going to shift this? I had hit something really old. And I went and I dug up an old picture of myself, my baby picture. And I did Go Love 20 for my young self. And the whole thing just shifted. Nice. So, but we'll wow. get started. Ooh, -hoo. this is my friend, Pauline McGuire. She's a catch, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By Zoom right now, apparently. <laughs> Socially. Live on Facebook, too. That's the next <laughs> step on Della's voice. I'll be doing the matchmaking. <laughs> Socially distance matchmaking. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's been a blast talking to you, Polly. Always a pleasure, thank my you. dear. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. It's late. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And we will talk soon, my friend. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay for everyone, have a great night. I will see you uh, next time on Della's Voice. And for now, this is Della helping to spark your soul. Until next time.